So we want to go ahead and create another variable here called scroll underscore height, and that's going to equal um, text area underscore height, and we want to minus the inner height of this terms uh, text area. So we go ahead and uh, select, uh, no, it will be just be this, and then dot inner height, like that. So let's just go ahead and um, pop the scroll height into here, underscore height, and let's go ahead and refresh and scroll down, and you can see this is 560. So uh, the original the value that we had, minus 560, uh, is going to equal the, uh, the actual height. So, oh sorry, no, uh, I'm completely wrong. Uh, I could have gone and said inner height and echoed out inner height or, or uh, put the text inside of here. So we can go ahead and do that now. Uh, and that will show you the inner height, which is 164. Uh, and now what we've done is we've subtracted 164 from this original text area, text area height. And then we have the scroll height, uh, which um, will match the inside height of the, uh, the document, or inside height of the text area, sorry. So now that we have this accurate value, we can go ahead and perform um, an if statement. But we first of all need to return the value. Let's just return, let's just get rid of that back. Uh, we need to return the value of where the scroll is at. So we can do this and we can match it to the scroll height that we uh, retrieved earlier. So the scroll height that we retrieved earlier is 560. So if we were to return the scroll height, which is uh, as we scroll down the, the point that, at which we're at, this should match 560 when we get to the end. It's important that when we get to the end we can match it because that's when we want to uh, uh, show the um, checkbox. So scroll top is going to equal this dot scroll top. Uh, and this is a jQuery function and that's going to return the um, current position of the scroll bar. So we can go ahead and say scroll top and we're going to put that into our feedback div. So now when we scroll down you can see this value incrementing and when we get to the end it equals 560. So we did some calculations earlier and got the actual height of the inside as we scrolled, so the whole scroll area, um, and now we've returned the same value. So we can match this at the end. Uh, yeah, we can match this at the end. So uh, let's go ahead and just get rid of this. We no longer now need this div. Let's go and get rid of that as well. And now what we want to do is perform an if statement to check whether the scroll top is equal to the scroll height, the accurate height value that we returned for the inside. So we just simply say if scroll underscore top is equal to scroll underscore height, we want to disable this um, disabled attribute. So we want to remove the attribute completely. So all we do is we say hash agree, which remember is our checkbox area or our checkbox element. Uh, and we just want to remove an attribute from that. And that attribute is disabled. So now we've relayed each value into that div and, and displayed that they match uh, as we get to the bottom. So now as the scroll top equals the scroll height, we know uh, that we've, we've scrolled down essentially to the bottom of this text area. So now when we refresh and we scroll down, you can see this is still disabled, uh, but when we reach the bottom, the condition of this if statement will be true, uh, and therefore this checkbox will be enabled. So this is quite a, a simple uh, piece of code. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, make the height a bit bigger just to see how this doesn't affect the uh, functionality. So I've made the height slightly bigger, but however when we scroll down, we still match it and it still uh, is available to check. So the code that we've written dynamically updates uh, using pretty much these two variables, do all the calculation. Uh, so whatever height we have the scroll area at, or the text area at, it will always return uh, this um, condition as true uh, because we're returning the, uh, the most accurate values. So this will work obviously whatever height or whatever width you have the text area at. So, quite a useful tool if you wanted to include something like this in terms and conditions. Uh, obviously, you can enable and disable buttons instead of check checkbox areas. Uh, if you wanted this literally just to be a button, 
uh, you could go ahead and just replace this uh, here with a button and then you would have a value for your button so for example continue um, we'll just get rid of that for now and it would uh, work in exactly the same way you can see that the continue button is disabled uh, yet when we go all the way down to the bottom this button is enabled so quite versatile with different elements as well obviously the disabled attribute applies to almost all HTML elements uh, so quite an easy uh, way to do this uh, the calculations are slightly complicated but the overall concept uh, is obviously quite easy and you could go ahead and apply this to a text area um, and obviously use this uh, in an actual real life situation which is nice because uh, it's nice to see something that can actually be used so that's uh, how we use scroll top and the scroll height and the inner height to calculate this and display a hidden or disabled element.